Hey friend, I'm Pastor Willie Vaughn with Out of the Box Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we look into God's Word together. At Out of the Box, we believe that the key to a vibrant spiritual life in the Christian faith is about more than just believing that God exists and that Jesus died on the cross so that one day we can get to heaven. In fact, God is a loving Father, and like every good and loving Father, He wants to see His children succeed in every area of life. So He's given us His Word, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And throughout the stories and the history and the poetry of the Bible, God has hidden these treasures, these secrets of knowledge and wisdom that He desires for us to seek out and apply to our lives. As it says in Proverbs 25 too, it says, It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to seek it out. And so I've endeavored to try to dig into this, the Word of God, dig into the Bible, and find these secrets, these wisdoms, and studying the world around us, and present it in a practical, applicable, easy-to-understand way, so that you can experience the abundant life that God desires for you to live and succeed in your life. And that's why we create tools and resources to help you grow spiritually and succeed in every area of your life that God wants you to. Not only so that you can enjoy it, but so that you can be a witness to the world of God's goodness and love. Happy New Year. It's January of 2023, and I'm excited to start this season out my first message of the year with this message titled, Making All Things New. And this message, it really started from just this small seed, like a lot of great things do. Just this small seed in the book of the Bible, the last book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5, where it says, The one who is seated on the throne says, Behold, I am making all things new. And it's this idea and the principles that we find in this verse as we study it and applying it to different areas of Scripture and what God is trying to say in this, in this verse, in this message to us that He wants us to take a hold of. As we uncover and dig into and look into and study and dissect this idea, we get these principles that will help us seize opportunity when it arises instead of letting it fly by. It will give us the strength and ability we need to overcome temptation and help us to grow into and grab a hold of all the things that power that God wants us to have to enjoy the life He has for us and be a better witness to who He is and to the, to the world around us. So let's get into that, but before we do, I want to give a shout out to Jim and Doreen. Guys, thank you for subscribing and being a part of the Out of the Box family. I hope and pray that this ministry helps you grab hold of and capture every blessing that God wants you to experience for you and your family in this new year. So let's start off again by reading and looking at our foundational scripture, Revelation 21.5. And the, John writes, Behold, The one who sits on the throne says, Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down, for these words are faithful and true. Now, to get an idea here, we'll start out by who is John talking about? He goes, Behold, the one, the one who sits on the throne. Well, we know that he's talking about Jesus. In, in Revelation 19, 16, it says this about Jesus, that he was given this title. It's written on his robe and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When we think about this, I think it's really good to take a moment and stop and reflect on this point, the one who is seated on the throne. Jesus himself asked his disciples in Matthew 15, 16, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Jesus is asking us the same question in this scripture. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that Jesus is? You know, as we've come out of the Christmas season, we've all celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ, that baby in the manger. We've told the story of how God came to be our Emmanuel. But I know there's this movie, Talladega Nights. Now it's not the most God-honoring movie at all. But in the one scene of this movie, Bobby R Ricky is, or Ricky Bobby. 
Ricky Bobby is praying and he keeps praying to baby Jesus, little baby Jesus. Now it's funny and we laugh about it, but think about it. Is it kind of true in our lives? When we get so wrapped up in the Christmas story about this little baby that came was laid in a manger, do we start to picture Jesus that way? Or maybe we have an idea in our minds of who Jesus is by the pictures we've seen on the walls of small churches that we had growing up or that we've seen throughout the, the area in our lives. You know, this picture of Jesus who wears this simple robe, has this little lamb on his shoulders or is sitting, smiling, talking with children. Or maybe you have a crucifix that you hang on your neck or hung in your house and you see Jesus as the one who gave his life and died on the cross for us. The fact of the matter is Jesus is all these things that are depicted in these pictures and so much more. Because John is talking about here, he says, the one who sits on the throne. See, this is Jesus who sits on the throne. The one who himself said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority and in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He is this King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is humble. He is kind. He is loving. He is peaceful. But he is also worthy of utmost honor and respect. And so when we're thinking about this story, we're talking about this, we need to embrace and approach Jesus in this way, that the one who is sitting on the throne is talking to us, and he's got something to say. And I think when we really embrace all that Jesus is, all that he is, and all the aspects, we start to take him a lot more seriously when he talks, when he gives instructions when he tells us what to do or how to live our lives. We start to see he is seated on the throne. He has all authority and we should take note and take him seriously and listen to what he says. Colossians 2.9 says, the fullness of God, the fullness of the deity lives in Christ Jesus in bodily form. And so everything about God, the creator of the heavens and the earth rests in Jesus. When we approach Jesus, it's not something that we can easily ignore. It's not just a fairy tale. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who sits on the throne. And so we're looking at this verse and it starts with the one who sits on the throne says, behold, I am making all things new. Now, in preparing these messages, I like to look at different translations. And I have my go-to translation of the NIV. It's a good study Bible. I also have my NLT, my New Living Translation, where I just like to read and get into the story. But for this this day for this message, I want to go back a little bit to the King James Version because it has this word, behold. And think about it, when someone says behold, it's not something we use in conversation a lot, but when someone says behold, like, okay, it makes you want to stop. It makes you want to pay attention. It's not just saying look. And so think about it. the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords stops and says, behold. I don't think you can say the word behold without changing your tone of voice. And so Jesus here, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords says, stop. Behold, pay attention, listen to what I'm about to say because it is of utmost importance. And he says, behold, I am making all things new. Now, I consider myself a little bit of a wordsmith, okay? It's part of my craft, is what I do. And, and I think about how God desires to speak to us, but also when I want to say something, I try to rehearse what I want to say. I don't want to use a lot of words. I'm not the kind of guy that wants to go on and babble for hours and hours and hours. In fact, I actually get a little impatient with people who seem to talk and talk and talk. You know, you've ever had that person who will talk for 45 minutes and basically they could have summed it up in about five words? You know, I don't have time for that. And thinking about what God has done is He's had given us everything that we need to know in our lives. For everything that we could know in our 80 to 100 years of living on this earth. And He compressed it all down to one small book. It's not even a huge book. And I love how well some people translate the Bible, the, the title of this book, called B-I-B-L-E. Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Because I think God is very intentional with what He says. So when Jesus says, Behold, I I am making all things new. He's intentional with the words that he's using. And, and sometimes we read the Bible and we read it again and again and it never really sticks out to us until we read it that last time. And this hit me as I was reading this and thinking about the new year. Jesus says, behold, I am making all things new. He doesn't say, behold, I have made all things new. And he doesn't say, someday, I'll make all things new. See, a lot of times in our depiction of Christianity, we think about Jesus, okay, someday I'll make all things new. In fact, Jesus was talking when he was ministering to uh, this family. This woman came up to him and says, I know that someday you'll, be, you'll bring about the resurrection. And he says, no, no, hold on. 
I am the resurrection and the life. I am eternally. Jesus here, seated on the throne, King of kings, Lord of lords, says, I am making all things new. God is a new maker. This is a profound aspect of his character, of his nature. I am making all things new. God is in the habit. Jesus is in the habit. It is part of his personality to be always making all things new. That he is making all things new. And this found, is found throughout Scripture. And we see in Genesis 1.1, And God created the heavens and the earth. He is a creator. In Isaiah 43.19, again, he says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. And that was written 700 years before Jesus came to this earth. We're reading in the book of Revelation today, Revelation 21.5. That's written about 100 years after Jesus was born. 60 years after Jesus had died on the cross, was resurrected, and went to ascended into heaven. So this is Jesus' eternal identity. He is a new maker. And why is this so important? Because so often in our lives, we want God to change things, we want God to fix things, or we want to go back and just live in our comfort zone. But here's the problem. If we try to live in our comfort zone while following Jesus, it doesn't work. You're actually fighting God because it's His very character and nature to make all things new. Now, I love it when Jesus was talking in Matthew 21, 44, and He was talking about Himself, and this is what He said. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but anyone on whom this stone falls will be crushed. Okay, the first couple of hundred times I read that, I'm like, is this one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of things? But then I started to understand this. Jesus, in his identity of a new maker, says, if you come to me, and if you're going to cooperate with me, and if you're going to submit to me, and if you're going to follow me, you're going to fall on me, you will be broken. You'll be broken to pieces, but in such a way that I can heal you, that I can bring you to wholeness, that I can make you new. But if you're going to fight me, this rock is going to fall on you and it's going to crush you. Listen, God is a new maker. Jesus is a new maker. And if you want to stay the same, if you want to stay in your comfort zone, you're fighting God. You're fighting God's very nature. You're fighting God's activity in this world. If you're refusing to be changed, and guess what? If you try to fight God, you're not going to win. So Jesus is saying, listen, you, if you come to me, you're going to be broken. Listen, I'm not promising everything's going to be good. Sometimes we try to make Jesus be a lot nicer than he is. And he says, listen, if you come to me, there's going to be some brokenness. There's going to be some discomfort. There's going to be some hurt. There's going to be some pain. But then you're going to experience healing. And if you fight me, you're not going to win. You would think about what Jesus says when he did the Sermon on the Mount. Some of the things we say that we, he said that we just gloss over. Like when he said, blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Oh, that sounds so nice. No, it's not. Mourning isn't fun. Grieving isn't enjoyable. And yet Jesus said, this is part of what I do. You're going to grieve. You're going to hurt. You're going to experience discomfort. But then you will be comforted. When we come to him, we need to be willing to say, God, okay, you are a new maker, and I'm not going to fight against you anymore. I'm going to submit to you. I'm going to cooperate with you. Because here's the thing. New is coming. New is always coming. That's what God is doing. That's who He is. You can either get on board or you can get run over. And, and so in our lives, we need to understand this. If we really want to enjoy the life that God has for us, we need to embrace newness. We need to embrace when God is doing something new in our hearts and in our lives. Because God is a new maker and He is changing things. Things are changing and you're not going to go back to the way things were. Listen, you're not going to be able to stay the same and follow Jesus. In fact, I was thinking about this concept and a lot of people have seen that don't experience the transformation in their lives. I have friends who tell me that they're Christians, they believe in God and they pray every day. And I'm like, God, why are they not experiencing transformation? And here it is. I think it's engagement. That we need to engage with God. We need to cooperate with God in order to experience this transformation. We can read the Bible, but not do anything. We can pray, but not listen. And we won't experience God changing things in our lives. And, but to really experience God in our lives, we need to be willing to let things go. So how do we do this? How do we apply this to our life if we understand that God is a new maker and He's making all things new? Well, the first thing we need to be willing to do is to let go of the old. You see, in order to embrace the new, you have to let go of the old. That's what Paul writes in Philippians 3.13. He says, brothers, brothers and sisters... I do not consider myself to already have taken a hold of it, to already achieved everything that God wants to do. But this is what I do. This is what I try to do. 
forgetting what is behind and straining on towards what is ahead, grabbing a hold of the price that is God is calling me onwards and upwards in Jesus. And so we need to be willing to let go. You ever go on rock wall climbing? When I used to do youth ministry, I would take the kids to these, one of these indoor rock wall climbing places. And as you move forward, as you climb, you need to be willing to let go of what you're holding on to in order to reach higher, to pull yourself up. And I think about that. God desires for us to continue to go to higher levels. And one of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 55, 9, where he says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That's what God is saying to us. Listen, you want to know how high above you I am? I'm as high above you as the heavens are above the earth. Think about how high the stars are above where you're standing right now. That's how high God is above you. And sometimes we can look at that and say, wow, God's so much bigger. But I think God's not just saying that to point out a fact. He's saying, listen, you have room to grow. Listen, I want you to come closer to where I am. I want you to be nearer to me than you were yesterday. You need to go to higher levels. And so God is calling us higher. He says, let go of the past so that you can move on to the new. Let go of the old so you can grab a hold of the new. Come to me where I am because I am continually making all things new. And to embrace that, you have to be willing to let go of the old, to let go of the past, to let go of what you were comfortable with in order to embrace the excitement and everything that I have for you in your lives. We need to be willing to do that. In fact, I believe this is a foundational part of Christianity, that you need to embrace newness. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone really is in Christ, he has become a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. And so you need to be willing to embrace that, to let go of your old ways and continually learn and grow and climb higher and achieve and reach for more, more of God's goodness, more of God's holiness in your life, more of God's power, and more of God's adventure in your life. But see, we run into a problem here. We run into a little bit of danger. Because when you find ourselves saying, I wish I could go back to the old, we need to be careful. Again, we're fighting God. But also, I think, is we're opening ourselves up for a world of temptation. And you know, none of us on this earth can escape all temptation. But God gives us this idea. He says, listen, you want to really live a better life? You want to be a better human being? I want to help you with that. In Galatians 5.16, it says this, Be led by the Spirit, and you will not gratify or fulfill the desires of your flesh, or the desires of your sinful, evil, wicked human nature. And we call it, we know there's a divine nature, God's holiness, His goodness, His perfection, His love, His peace. And then there's our own human nature. Human nature tends to be selfish and self-centered. And we only want when we think about ourselves and what we want in the moment. And we're willing to let everyone else suffer in order to get our way. But God says, listen, I want you to be more like me. God calls us, be holy as I am holy. And he says, one of the key ways in doing that is be led by the Spirit. Allow yourself to come to a higher level. Uh, embrace the new. Allow me to do a new thing and make changes in you. Then you will not gratify your human nature, your wicked evil nature. And sometimes we get stuck, we start fighting God, God who is a new maker, God who is trying to change things, change our life, change our circumstances, and we try to push Him off. But not only are we fighting God, we are fighting the very nature in which He made us. See, God created you to cooperate with what He's doing. God created you to live in cooperation and communion with Him. God created you to desire in your heart for a rich, exciting, abundant life. Now what we really want is we want a life of adventure and zeal and excitement and passion with security. And the only way to find that is in Jesus. But when we start pushing off saying, no God, I know you're calling me to do something or I feel that uncomfortable, like you want me to walk in faith and do strange things and do new things, I'm not gonna do that. Our own hearts that God created still desire excitement, adventure, pleasure. And so when we push off the things that God has designed and is trying to bring into our lives to bring us pleasure, our own hearts still desire and crave it. And the only place they have to go is with sinful temptation. We have an enemy of our soul and the world around us says, here, try this. This will be fun. Try this. This will be excitement. Hey, don't worry. There's no side effects to doing this or doing that. And we end up in addictions. We end up in immoral behaviors because we're not embracing the life that God has for us, God, that exciting life that God has for us. You see, the enemy of our souls, the culture of this world wants us to believe being a Christian is boring. 
It's just sitting around reading the Bible. It's never having any fun. But in fact, the exact opposite is true. God says, I am a new maker. I am ready to do great, new, and exciting things in your life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life abundant. Have it to the fullness. Have it exciting. And so when we push off that opportunity, the only place else we have to go with our desire for pleasure and excitement is to the things that always bring us down, that always have a negative impact on our lives and our character, and even to bring us into depression and despair. And we get caught up in these addictions. We get caught up in circumstances that we don't want to be in. So if you want to be led by the Spirit, allow God to bring you forward, then you will not gratify those desires. So in cooperate and embrace the God who is making all things new and it will help you overcome temptation because you'll begin to realize that all the goodness of God he wants you to experience is so exciting, so gratifying that you no longer even want the other things of this world that don't last, the pleasure that doesn't last. You only want the things that really bring about true fulfillment and satisfaction which are found in Jesus Christ himself who is continually making all things new. But also as Christians, if you're really a Christian, you believe what the Bible says, you have a desire. Most of us have a desire. I get the question a lot. How do I share my faith with other people? Because if you believe Jesus died on the cross for you, and you believe that without Him, you're going to hell, because that's what the Bible tells us, you want everyone around you to know this wonderful thing too. And yet Jesus has given us, in His Word, this idea of how to do that in an, effectful, an effective way. In Matthew 5.16, Jesus said, In the same way, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. He says, let your light so shine. And think about this. It's not just doing the right thing, doing the good thing, being nice. He says, good deeds. Let your light shine that other people take notice. In other words, if you're cooperating, if you're being led by God, if you're being led by Jesus who is making all things new, and you are living the abundant, exciting, satisfying, gratifying life, and you have joy and peace in your heart, people are going to notice it. See, but you're going to, and they're going to ask you, and they're going to say, you know what? Your God is a good God. The way you live, I like that. And so a lot of times we, we eliminate and we hinder our own witness when people ask us, so what's new? Nothing. Not much. Same old, same old. Can we really be walking with the God who promises to make all things new if our lives are just same old, same old? And God says, no, I'm calling you to make all things new. I'm calling you to live an adventure so that you let your light so shine that I can shine through you that all the good thing opportunities that you have and all the ways that you're trying new things, growing and learning and growing as a person and experience excitement and success in your life by following me, that it shines for other people so that when they look at you, they say, he serves a good God. He serves an awesome God. He's that God, that kind of faith that is attractive to me so that they will glorify God and say, I want that God that you have. I want that Jesus that you talk about. And so one of the best ways is to live the exciting and new life that God has for us. That will be our witness. In 1 Peter 3.15, it says, Always be ready to give an answer. As you set apart Jesus as Lord in your life, always be ready to give an answer for those who ask for the hope that you have in you. And do so with gentleness and respect. Listen, if you're living a gratifying, satisfying, exciting, hopeful, peaceful, joyful life, you'll be able to say, hey, listen, this is for everyone. You'll be able to do so and say, this is why I'm excited. Because I have this God who is making things new, who's doing these new and adventurous things in my life. Well, but if this is the God, what God wants for us, if this is God's plan, how do we miss it? Back to that one of the verses I said before, Isaiah 43, 19, where God says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I think sometimes God is trying to do a new thing in our lives and we miss the opportunity because we do not perceive it. That's what God's asking. Do you not perceive it? Don't you see what I'm doing? And what happens is we miss it because we have this veil of deception over our eyes. And 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, and all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed by His image in ever-increasing glory. This comes from the Lord who is spirit. And see, we need to stop and think and be able to perceive the new things that God is doing if we're willing to contemplate the glory of God. To stop and think. 
You know, sometimes we allow the world or our situation or our circumstance to tell us what to think about what's going on. Oh, nothing will ever get better. Oh, I've gotten some difficulties and some challenges to go through. Nothing ever goes right. Oh, you, you get, just can't get ahead. Every time I climb the ladder, I fall back down. That's not the witness. That's not the thought process of someone who is spending their time contemplating, thinking about, studying the Bible, and looking into the God of all glory. When you start to contemplate the goodness of God, you're going to start to wonder, wait a minute, if God's made these promises, if this is who God says He is, is this, this really is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and this is the one who is actively making all things new, then how do I perceive what's going on in my life? And you start to see, wait a minute, maybe these challenges are actually opportunities. Maybe these challenges are opportunities for me to learn something new, to ask questions, to grow in my knowledge, to grow in my understanding of how the world works and of what God wants to do in my life. You see, sometimes we just give up and God says, no, don't give up. I'm making all things new, but you have to perceive it. I'm going to make a way in the wilderness if you look to me, if you're willing to cooperate with me. I'm going to give you the opportunity to overcome the challenges that you face, to be victorious. In Romans, the, the Bible tells us that we are more than overcomers. We are more than victorious for the challenges that we face through Christ Jesus, that He's wanting to do those things in our life. And in fact, the best testimony that we have is when we experience the same challenges as everyone else, and yet find a way through the God who's working in us, making things new to overcome, to surpass these challenges, to rise above mediocrity, to do better than the average and be above average, to be supernatural in our experience in life and enjoy success. And that's when we have the testimony and that's what God wants us to experience for our enjoyment and again for His witness of His goodness. And so we need to proceed, we need to contemplate, we need to take the veil off of our head, off of our face and be willing to see God as as he really is. Not as someone else told us he is. Not as what our doubts try to tell us what he is. Not as what our hidden understanding, but to unveil and take away the deception in our lives. And God is calling us to grow. In Romans 12 too, it says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world who want to lie to you and tell you that God doesn't love you. Who want to lie to you and tell you that God's not for you. Who want to lie to you and tell you that Christians boring. He says, don't be conformed to those patterns, but be transformed. Again, being made new by the renewing of your mind. Because when you do that, when you contemplate God's goodness, when you allow your mind to be renewed, then you will be able to test and approve, to know the will of God, His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. And so, if you want to do that, you have to grab hold and be willing to let God make you new. So don't be deceived. In Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Listen, God can't be lied about. He's going to be who he is. He's going to do what he does. A man reaps what he sows. And so be willing to let God lead you to greater and higher things. So do not be deceived. Don't, don't fall prey to that veil of deception that doesn't allow you to see what God is doing, that doesn't allow you to see the challenges you're experiencing as opportunities. Galatians 6, 7 says, don't be deceived. God will not be mocked. He's going to do what He does. A man reaps what he sows. Listen, if you reap to please God, if you're pursuing God, you're going to reap abundance. If, you're gonna, if you plant to please God, you're going to harvest abundance. But if you just keep saying, oh, things aren't going to go right for me, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to harvest. That's what you're going you're gonna to sow. So you need to be willing to look into God. Don't be deceived. Don't allow that veil of deception. Keep pursuing God and look at a rational understanding of the God who created the universe put you here for a reason because He wants you to keep growing, keep experiencing more of who He is. So how do we do this in our lives? Well, as we, as we approach, as we are in this new year, how do we allow God, the God who is making all things new, to work in our lives? How do we allow ourselves to experience the new things that God is doing? Well, maybe it's stepping out in faith and trying new things. I want you to think about what are you going to do new in this year? What are you going to cooperate with God in? Maybe it's just starting a new hobby. Maybe trying to get into, involved in a new club and a new organization. Think of that interest that you've had that you've never stepped out in. Go meet new people. Make a new friend. Maybe commit to reading some new books and growing and learning some new knowledge, some new understanding of the world around us from people who have succeeded. Going to a new church, getting a new idea of ministry, trying to pursue this newness because God wants you to do and experience new things. And of course, all of this happens with this understanding of making a commitment to Jesus Christ. 
This God who is sitting on the throne. In Lamentations it says, His mercies are new every morning. And to really experience it, sometimes we hold ourselves back because we're not letting ourselves to experience the mercy and the love of God. Whatever it is you've done, whatever sin you've committed, whatever you think has made you unworthy to enjoy a relationship with God, His Word tells us and promises us that His mercies are new and available to us every morning. And He's willing to make us a new creation, a new person, to let our old self go and become a new creation in Him. Have you done that yet? If you haven't, I invite you and encourage you to join with me right now. We're going to pray right now and ask Jesus to become Lord of our lives. Jesus, I believe that you are God. You are the God who sits on the throne. I believe your word when you say you are going to want to and are going to make me new. I believe that your mercies are new even now and I confess to you my sins, the things that I have let separate me from you, from my relationship with you. I ask your forgiveness. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and that that sacrifice is so powerful that it took away my sins. It's more powerful than anything I've ever done. That you died completely in my place, taking the punishment I deserved and I believe that on the third day God raised you from the dead giving us me hope of eternal life I want to make you right now my Lord and Savior and I ask that you come into my life to teach me and show me how to live for you in newness each and every day and I pray this in your name amen and the Bible says that if you believe that if you pray that out loud with all sincerity you are a child of God I encourage you to keep listening, keep watching. Reach out to us. Let us know you prayed that prayer so we can pray for you and encourage you. Now, I want to thank you, and I hope that this message, I do truly pray that this message has inspired, challenged, encouraged, and equipped you to lead the life in this new coming year in a newness of God. And I hope that you continue to ponder on these words, study them for yourself. As always, until next time, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. <laughs>